It's not yours. You'll never know. Right. Read it then, fuckhead. Rotten. Next line. Poppy is supposed to be keeping KB for Gilbert. <laughs> Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. Kingdom for a stage. Princess to act. <laughs> oh, Whitworth's coming. Oh, he doesn't matter. It's not his period. Monarchs, to survey the swelling scene. He's just passing. Simply be left to me to decide who I'm supposed to be. Now, uh, can anyone here read? There was a blooming sparrow that up a blooming spout. There came a blooming shower of rain. And, Mason? What, sir? Stand up when you say what. This is your work, isn't it? No, sir. It looks remarkably like your writing. Yes, sir, it is, sir. That's better, Mason. But it's my uncle's work, sir. You wrote it in my autograph album, sir. And washed the bloomer out, sir. <laughs> I beg your pardon. So it finishes, sir. There came a blooming shower of rain. And, and washed the bloomer out, sir. Silence! Thank you, Mason. You may sit down. I thought as we were doing poetry today, sir. Sit down, And Mason. Mr Gilbert was late, sir. Except it turns out to be you, sir. Down, Mason! First of all, let me apologise for not being Mr. Gilbert. Secondly... That's all right, sir. Thank you, Ottawa. We shall just have to lump it, sir. Be careful, Ottawa. Secondly, it does not mean that because I usually meet you on the field of simultaneous quadratics and right-angled triangles, I have no acquaintance with what the poet Spencer described, with a reference to the poet Chaucer, as... The well of English undefiled. Struth. Who said that? The poet Spencer, sir. Anderson. Now, can anyone tell me how many hours there are in Sparrow? That's on the board, sir. And considering who wrote it on the board, it is naturally written wrong. Isn't it, Mason? No, sir. In my autograph album, sir. There are oh. two... Ours in Sparrow, Mason. And now let us forget all about your autograph album and wash the bloomer out. Clean the board. Now <laughs> well, sit down, boys, sit down. Don't let me spoil anything. Just passing, Mr. Wentworth. Save you a visit to me. Letter from a parent with a very sound suggestion, which I think mm -hmm. uh, is rather in your line of country. I suggest uh, Sunday afternoon. Very good Two time. boys here at Burgrove, another one on the way, so I think uh, it'd be as well if we did allow the, the, the situation to occur. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, uh, don't read it now. Mm -hmm. Boy. I see we're enjoying ourselves with Mr. Gilbert's young men of letters. What is it we're giving them now? Let me see. No, 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 no. Ah, there was a blooming sparrow. Perhaps I could explain, sir. I only took it over a very short period. a very it's interesting it's use of the anacrusis. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Why am I thinking of the anapist? <laughs> and I, I admire your versatility. Please carry on. I think two hours in sparrow. Hmm? Uh, no difficulty in uh, 
Nibs this morning, I take it. <laughs> no, no, headmaster. Thank Good. You. Good. <laughs> Stop talking. You must talk talk to me. Yes, I can. Can I have a new nib, sir? No. All right. Can I have one, sir? No, you can't. Like a lot of silly sheep. You can't have a new nib, Trent. It's not that, sir. Don't tell me somebody's got a sensible question. Yes, sir. Please, sir. What's an anacrusis? Well, it's a... <laughs> Sir. No, Hilton, you can't have a new nib. No, sir. Please, sir, what's an anapiste? Any other boy want a new nib? Oh, yes, sir. Please, sir. Yeah, hang around, Hilton. Yes, sir. Oh, that's nonsense. What? A bottle in Rambo. Oh, no. Are you interested in botany, Hopgood 2? No, sir. Why, sir? Is your elder brother, Hopgood 1, interested in botany, Hopgood 2? No, sir. Good. Is your father interested? Oh, yes, sir. Ah. And my mother, sir. They're both nuts on it. Are they really? I'll try to overlook that. What, sir? You know that I, I forbid slang in any of my classes. Nuts is not English. Ah, oh, not English. Be quiet, please. And the rest of you, write out as much as you can remember of your favourite poem. You know, I'm sorry, sir, they are. They got engaged at the Royal Botanical Gardens. Oh, no, no, no. No, sir, I wasn't there at the time. <laughs> quiet. doing so already, Anderson. No, sir. I mean this afternoon when you take the botany ramble. Oh, it's not finally decided that I shall be taking well, the botany possible, ramble. Possible, no doubt, but hardly probable, Matron. I can never remember boys' pyjamas being confiscated. There's no limit as to what can happen to Mr. Wentworth's boys. It can be shorts, shirts and blazers with them. Excuse me, Headmaster, but I couldn't help overhearing my name. Ah, oh, Wentworth, good morning. Uh, good morning, Headmaster. Good morning, Mrs. Wentworth. Yes. May I say, sir, that if Matron... Uh, Excuse me one moment, Wentworth. Fancy, that must be Lord and Lady Elmdale and their son, the Honourable Alastair Matron. Would you be so kind as to greet them for me and tell them I shall be with them in stutter? Of course. Please inspire all confidence, Matron. Certainly, Master. I really must protest, Sir Master. With the greatest respect of all. Of course. Please go on. It is only recently that she was accusing me over socks. Accused you of confiscating socks? Yes, exactly. No, no, no. Not confiscating them. Mud, headmaster. You haven't, mud. Been, you haven't been confiscating mud. Uh. No, 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 no question of confiscation. But I merely say this: that where there is mud, small boys will do their best to get muddy. It's in their, it's in their nature to do so. And if Matron persists in her obsession that I'm getting them muddy only in order to add to her duties, which God knows are light enough compared with those of the teaching staff. Yes, yes, when that mind. is the Elmdale. So if you'll forgive me, a nice bright day for your uh, botany walk, eh? Ah, no much problems one, today. One other good, thing. good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're right. giving them a, a nature phone this morning. Ah, now I can explain that, sir. Get together, boys. Keep together. Come on, Matron. Come on, Matron. Oh, yes, sir. By your foot, sir. Mason. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mason. Atkins. Run ahead and tell Betterton and Thwaites to come back here. Yes, sir. Our two guests from the upper fourth. Go on, run, boy. I think they should have the privilege of walking with me under the circumstances. What circumstances, sir? Oh, very rewarding circumstances. Oh, what's this one, sir? No. Let's see. Oh, that's uh, no, it's nothing. Very common. Very common indeed. Isn't it? I think it's part of a sheep, sir. Oh, I see what you mean, sir. I'm Betterton, sir. Thwaites is stuck. Throw that away. 
Yes, sir. In the drain, sir. Oh, anywhere. Mason, give it a decent burial. No, sir. Freight is stuck in the drain, sir. They sent me to tell you, sir. What? Freight is no business to be in the drain at all. Where? No, sir. Stand aside, boy. Why are they up for loony? Ah, he's up for loony spout. Who's a loony? Oh, the upper fork. Oh, yes. Stop that, stop that. Get on. Are you in there, Smith? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, shut up, little one. Come out of there, Smith. Sir, uh, you want a shower of rain, sir? That's the last thing we need. Come out of there at once, Smith. Why? To wash the bloomer out, sir. <laughs> Silence! Come out of there at once, Smith. If this is some kind of prank, you'll find me a very different proposition from Mr. Gilbert. We're not the upper falls, you know. Wait, Dave. He's a loony. He's not. Yes, he is. You're a loony. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Stop that! Wait! Come on, Mr. Gilbert. Sir, perhaps he'd hear you if we went round the other end. His head's facing that way. Mason, get up your boots. Whatever the old matron say. Come on, sir! you think you're doing? I'm stuck, sir. Where are you stuck? In the drain, sir. Don't try to be funny with me, please. This is Mr. Wentworth speaking. Where are you stuck? At the back, sir. I got wrapped up, sir. I think my brain is caught on the roof. Sorry, sir. Are your feet wet? Pretty wet, sir. You're a stupid boy, Thwaites. Yes, sir. How long have you been here? I mean, how long have you been here at Burgrove? Oh, four terms, sir. Quite long enough to know better. You stay where you are, Thwaites. Is he all right, sir? Is he dead, sir? Are you going to leave him there, sir? Shall I fetch Mr Gilbert, sir? <laughs> now, what's in, boy? Well, three braces, waiters. No, no, waiters, braces. Me, sir? Oh, I'm to do. All right, tear off the little. Over there. No, no, no. Leave that on. There was two boys with the braces called up. Just remove your, your, your boots and stuff. Oh, never mind. Right. Off we go. And free his braces off the two. Don't lose your care. The Run about, you boys. Run. Jump. Get dry. Play leapfrog, run races, do what you like. Within reason, within reason. Caps on at all times.
Oh, thank you, sir. Ah, Mason. Last as usual. No, sir. I see I've been thinking. What you could tell Matron. Oh, that's very kind of you. But I'm not, I'm not under any obligation to tell Matron anything. No, sir, but wouldn't it be easiest to explain that you fell into the stream and we all got a bit dirty trying to help you out? Very easy indeed, Mason. If you can think of a reason for my having fallen in. Need there be a special reason, sir? Am I the sort of person who goes about falling into streams for no reason whatsoever? Well, there was that time... All right, that's quite enough. Thank you very much. Get off to school. Mensana incorpore sano, Lady Emdo. As the poet Juvenal put it. A principle we embrace most earnestly here at Belgrove, Lady Emdo. To care not merely for the mind of the boy, but for the body of the boy. Godliness we hope to instill, of course, but cleanliness should not be far behind. So, if you should see fit to let us have the Honourable Little Alastair... Report to me. Oh, tea. Oh, tea. Oh, tea. Oh, tea. Oh, tea. Oh, tea. 